everyone. So today we are going to talk about all the stuff that is pretty important, I think, for you to try to get done before in Walker, stuff that might be affected by the upcoming stat squish, which we don't know at this time quite how severe it's going to be. Like, we don't know if the stat squish is going to severely impact uh, how easy it currently is to do unsync content and uh, other content that might be affected. So I'm going to get into all that. And uh, with the Inwalker being about a little over two months away, I think now is a good time to set some reasonable goals that you could feasibly do between now and then. That'll keep you busy anyway, but um, now might be uh, the best time to do those things. So first of all, in the topic of unsynced content, so like I said, we are getting that big stat squish that's coming in Inwalker, and we don't know right now how much it will affect unsyncing. Right now, you can easily unsync old extreme trials and just sort of blaze through them, easy, easy to uh, farm for mounts and things like that. But they did say that they will be adding a small buff in Inwalker that will compensate for the stat squish somewhat, that will make the unsyncing less painful, but we don't know how effective that buff will be. We don't know, like compared to now, how easy it will be. And a lot of people are speculating that it will be harder to do unsync content because, uh, I mean, it's probably better to err on the side of caution in any case. So I would suggest getting all of your raid and trial mounts from the extreme trials from past expansions and the previous savage raids that you can currently unsync. You might want to get all those. They're puppies, your ponies, your birds, and all of that. I think now would be a really good time to try to farm those out before uh, the stat squish in Endwalker happens. You want to complete the coils of Bahamut unsynced if you don't want to go through the super high difficulty raid. Uh, most people do tend to just go through unsync to watch all the cutscenes and experience the story because it's a pretty important story as we're going into Endwalker. In Endwalker, we'll, we will, of course, be going into Charlian. That is the homeland of Archon Louis Swa. And the Coils of Bahamut story teaches you about the fate of what happened to Archon Louis Swa. And that's going to be really important information as we go there to Charlian and try to piece together the puzzle of whatever the Inwalker story will be. So if you do enjoy the story and you haven't done Coils, well, you are kind of regretted by the time we get to Charlian. So go do that, unsynced. I would say do it unsynced now uh, before the expansion. So you'll be fresh when you get into the expansion. And uh, so that hopefully after the stat, stat squish, it won't be much, much harder to do Unsynced because right now we don't really know. I should also mention that Natsuko Ishikawa, the main writer for Shadowbringers and Endwalker, has suggested that you do this. Like, you definitely go want to do uh, Coals of Bahamut to watch all the cutscenes, at least do it Unsynced. She also recommended that you complete the Omega Raid series from Stormblood. She said that these are both going to be important to know about for the Endwalker story. So um, she said that was pretty important side content to complete before the expansion. And again, stuff that you can unsync now. Uh, honestly, un Omega even unsynced is not the easiest, but uh, you can get through it. <laughs> you, can add, you can go in through AlphaScape and find out uh, where they get the chicken tenders. Ultimates might be affected by the stat squish as well. So, I mean, is there time to do an ultimate before in Walker? Yes. Sure, why not? Yeah, okay. I mean, you could. There, uh, There's probably time. You could do uwu, most likely. Another thing you can, of course, do while you're unsyncing old content is farming glams, farming glamours from old dungeons and old raids and things. Might want to look at the Eorzea Collection website and search through the gear sets there and see maybe there's any gear sets that you really want to hunt down. You also want to prepare gear for the various jobs or roles you might be considering playing or maining in Endwalker. That doesn't necessarily mean you have to get Abyss set for those jobs, though, I mean, that can be fun to do to feel like super ready for the new expansion, but, you know, having a decent set for the jobs you're thinking about going into the new expansion with and keeping in mind that Reaper will be considered a maiming job, so it will be sharing gear with Dragoon. So you might want to maybe level Dragoon, get some of that maiming gear that could be shared and like also work on Reaper. You could gather the even the glamour, uh, the maiming glamour for Reaper so you can look cool. Though keep in mind that it is what is on the inside that counts. I know this is pretty rich coming from me, but you want to clean up your inventory? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> My inventory has not been good lately, so look, I feel your pain if you also are suffering uh, right now with terrible inventory, but, uh, you know, there are people that have made the guide on how to clean up your bags <laughs> in the game, so 
uh, I'll put a link to that where you can, you know, watch the, watch the guide from the person that really knows how to clean up their inventory really good. Uh, so that, that should help. But you, you're going to want to do that at some point before the expansion. But you can probably do it later, like right? You can just put it off. You can do that later. You want to gear up and level your retainers. Your retainers, of course, being your bank in the game for some people who may not know what retainers are <laughs> yet. Uh, though I'm very excited about retainers in expansion because I will have Bunny Boy. I'll have Bunny Boy retainers. I'll have my harem there for me. So you also want to clean up and prepare your UI, maybe even reconsider your setup a little bit uh, because I recently changed my UI after I got the Logitech G600 mouse. No, I'm not paid. I'm not sponsored by Logitech, uh, but I have enjoyed the mouse a lot and it's caused me to reconfigure my hotbars and everything. And it took me, like if, basically what I'm saying is if you're thinking about getting an MMO mouse, uh, going into the new expansion, you are probably going to want to get it like at least a month before uh, the expansion comes because it took me about a, a good solid month to really get a handle on it. And uh, the more time that you can give yourself to get used to a new mouse where you have a bunch of buttons <laughs> on the side of it, uh, the better because uh, it was very, very difficult and very awkward for me for like at least a month. Uh, so I wouldn't want to play without it. It's incredible. I'm really glad I have it now. Uh, but if you are going to change your setup in that way, get a new mouse, then uh, you want to get it as soon as possible because um, you don't want to be struggling with it this, when <laughs> the expansion is new. Like, it was very it was very painful and very hard for a long time. Okay. I did make a video, and this video was made before I got the mouse, so the hot bars don't look the same as they do now. Um, but I did talk about how I set up my UI. I talked about my job change menu. Uh, and how I created that. Uh, so all that, I'll link to that in the description box down below so you can get an idea on how I do things. Um, you also wanna inform yourself on all of the upcoming job changes. Now we are expecting to hear more about that later this month, um, maybe in the live letter that's upcoming this weekend. So stay tuned for that. Try to you know be plugged into the Fantasy 14 news, check the lodestone as often as you can. Uh, and we will hopefully very soon learn more about the new jobs and what major changes are coming to existing jobs. So we can like make informed decisions about, you know, which jobs do I really want to gear up right now in preparation for the expansion? What do I really want to main? You want to get the level three FC buffs ready. Okay. So I actually don't run an active FC. I don't, I really just don't have time to, to run an FC or to be in an active FC where there's a lot of expectation. Like I just cannot because I'm pretty busy with the discord and, and Twitch and everything else. Uh, but I can recommend that if you're like me and you're not in an FC where they have the FC buffs ready, I know that the highest level FC buff is uh, tier three heat of battle. That's 15% XP buff. That's what I meant. I'm talking about XP buffs here. That's really going to be amazing for you whenever you're leveling in the early days of the expansion. And uh, so if you're like me, you might want to pick up some squadron battle manuals. Those will give you 15% XP bonus. So that's as good as the best FC buff, but it only lasts for two hours. But for me, that's been fine. I just, I've been uh, collecting those with my adventure squadrons, sending them out on the missions and getting as many battle manuals as I can uh, as we go into Inwalker. I'm just trying to collect them and not use them. Well, actually, <laughs> I don't need to use them because I have all my jobs at max level. So uh, that's another thing that you can do. Side note, so, quick side note, you could get all your jobs at max level and get your Amaro mount, who's very lovely. As for the story, now I mentioned at the start of this video, we were talking a little bit about coils and we were talking about um, Omega a little bit. Those were the two things that Natsuko Ishikawa, the writer, said that you really, really should go through. Like that's the most important recommendations that she had if you want any kind of hints on the story for Inwalker or any important backstory uh, for Inwalker. But in addition to that, she gave some other recommendations. If you have more time, like if you have more time than just clearing out coils and Omega, she said that you should also do previous side content because Endwalker is intended to be a conclusion. It's supposed to be a big conclusion to this huge story arc that we've been having since the beginning of the game. And so uh, I think it's gonna be sort of like a, Maybe like a, we might get little reminders of all the little 
people and all the little places that we met along the way. And so she suggested that you do Four Lords, you do the We're Lit story, and uh, all the job quests, all the job quests, um, and um, also doing Eureka and Baja. Now, as for Baja, that would be my suggestion that you focus on. I would strongly suggest that you finish Baja Citadel, all the Save the Queen story before Endwalker, um, because I believe that that content is going to die for a while after the expansion launches. Like, I don't think it's going to be dead forever because Baja is very good leveling content from 70 to 80, but... Yeah, it's it's probably going to be really difficult to do that for, for quite some time. And Baja is important because that's how you can get your relic weapons. That's what that's the main thing that I'm focusing on right now uh, as we're going into, into Endwalker. I'm collecting as many beautiful, sparkly, shiny relic weapons as I can. And you do that from doing a Baja Citadel. So um, I'm going to put on screen, I think. I'll try to show somewhere on screen uh, where you can go to unlock that. And I strongly su suggest that you do that. Uh, before the expansion, you could also do Eureka. That was another thing Natsuka Ishikawa suggested doing, which was kind of odd. I, I wonder if we will actually get an update on the Eureka story. Uh, Eureka is still active. You know, Eureka is similar to Baja content that is no longer as active as it was when it was out in Stormblood, but there's still plenty of people doing it. I mean, I'm going into Baldessian Arsenal, uh, the major raid from Eureka relatively often I would say and I see runs going all the time for that I know someone that very recently like in the past month or two uh, completely went through all of Eureka from, from the beginning uh, so it's quite possible to do now and that is something that you can uh, busy yourself with as we go into the expansion I know there's some very cool like glowy shiny glamour that you can get from Eureka and of course the uh, relic weapons the beautiful relic weapons I would say that it's worth doing to get the experience of Valdesian Arsenal, which is incredible, and to get the very cool mount, Demi Ozma, from the final raid that you get access to at the end, end of Eureka, though I just about lost my mind <laughs> trying to get it. Before I go today, I want to remind y'all that we do have a live letter coming this Friday, September 17th at 7 p.m. PDT. So if you're in Europe, it's going to be once again at the butt crack of dawn. It'll be at 1 a.m. UK time for me. It's going to be three in the morning. I might be sleeping through it and watching the VOD later. If I can, we'll see. How can I sleep under such circumstances? We'll, we'll see about it. But that's this Friday, so please look forward to it. And if you haven't heard, there's also the Final Fantasy 15 collab event is back. It is happening this week. So that's, hey, that's one thing that you might want to do uh, right now. That is, of course, before Endwalker. I think it's going to be here until October 18th at 7.59 a.m. PDT is the cutoff time on October 18th. So right now is your chance to get that car, to get the very awesome car uh, from the collab. And it's 200K MGP. You can also get the hairstyle, Noctis hairstyle. You can get the Noctis glam. And it's not very hard to do at all. It's uh, pretty easy to, to go through that and do the trial. Well, I mean, the, uh, not trial, <laughs> the personal instance that you have to do the personal solo duty no problem so uh yeah i would that's already live that's right now you can log in and get the car uh from doing the little quest there buns thank you so much for watching i hope you like this video and i hope it's been helpful for you in starting to crystallize some of the goals that you might want to set for yourself between now and in walker if you like this video please consider supporting the channel on patreon or on twitch you can also support the channel for free by clicking the subscribe button or by sharing this video with your fellow warriors of light thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time bye